this is hopefully the first step on a journey towards a civilization on, on Mars, life becoming multiplanetary. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and think to change times and laws. Life can become multiplanetary. This is the goal we should strive for. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, 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 and them that dwell in heaven, tabernacle in heaven. I believe that it's important for the future to be a space-faring civilization um, and out there, ultimately be out there among the stars, be out there among the stars. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Be out there among the stars. Among the stars. Be out there among the stars. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. If the future does not include being out there among the stars, you know, based on the moon and expand, expanding beyond Earth. And among the stars. Be out there among the stars. Life becoming multiplanetary. And lift off. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the Earth. Lift off of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Launching dragon to dragon, dragon to dragon, dragon to dragon, dragon to dragon to the International Space Station. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Dragon blasted to space. The dragon. Dragon is expected to stay attached to the space station until October 28th. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Dragon is currently the only craft capable of returning a significant amount of supplies from the station. He was cast out into the earth. The, the, the goal of SpaceX really was to make as much progress as possible to advance rocket technology to the point where hopefully we can establish a colony on Mars. Welcome aboard. Dragon, SpaceX, Comcheck, ground stations. SpaceX, Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. Three, two, one. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA, go SpaceX, Godspeed, bottom dog. On behalf of the entire launch team, thanks for flying with Falcon 9 today. We hope you enjoyed the ride and wish you a great mission. We would like to uh, welcome you aboard Capsule Endeavor. MD Houston flight. Houston is go for undocking and departure. Dragon is committed to undock. SpaceX Dragon on Dragon to Ground, we are ready for the systems brief. Copy. As stated, Dragon's in a healthy state. We are proceeding toward the primary landing site, and uh, your timeline is current. Visual, two drones out. 300 meters. We have brakes for splashdown. Copy, brakes for splashdown. Endeavor, on behalf of the SpaceX and NASA teams, welcome back to planet Earth, and thanks for flying SpaceX. It's a, it's a humbling experience to be a part of uh, what was accomplished. It's great to see how excited everybody was. 
We hope it brings a little bit of brightness to a pretty tough 2020. Advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Um, you know, being able to fly, being able to see over long distances, being able to communicate, um, and having access to all the world's information uh, instantly from almost anywhere on the earth. Um, this, is, this is stuff that, that really would be magic, it would be considered magic um, in, in times past. Being a multi-planet species, being out there among the stars is important for uh, the long-term survival of humanity. You know, if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system, um, among the stars. I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's the point? There's got to be things that people find inspiring. The future of humanity will fundamentally bifurcate uh, along the lines of either single planet species or multi-planet species. Um, and uh, a multi-planet uh, version of humanity or of, of humanity's future is going to last a lot longer. Uh, we will propagate civilizations in the future far longer if we are multi-plant species than if we are a single plant species. Um, and, uh, and so it's like planetary redundancy backing up the biosphere. Uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, we, we've got all of our eggs in one basket here. Um, we should try to protect that basket and do everything we can, but, but there are so, some risks that are just extremely difficult uh, to mitigate. Um, and some which we, we will ultimately not be able to mitigate. Um, so it just seems like the right thing to do. And then the question is, the next question is, well, should we do it now or should we just, should we wait for some point in the future? And I think, I think it's, the wise move is to do it uh, now because the window of technology for this is open. And it's the first time that window has been open in the four and a half billion year history of Earth. There are really two fundamental paths. History is going to bifurcate along two directions. One, one, one path is we stay on Earth forever, um, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. Um, I, I don't have an immediate doomsday prophecy, but there's, it's eventually history suggests there will be some, some doomsday event. Uh, the alternative is to become a space-bearing civilization and a multi-planet species, which uh, I hope you would agree that is the right way to go. Because like, why do we need to build a city on Mars with a million people on it in your lifetime? Which... Yeah, I think it's important to have um, a future that is inspiring and appealing. I mean, I just think that there, like, there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and you want to live. Like, why do you want to live? What, what's the point? What, what inspires you? What, what do you love about the future? And if, if we're not out there, if the future does not include being out there among the stars uh, and being a multi-planet species, I find that, in, that it's incredibly depressing if that's not the future that we're going to have. You decided to build a space company. Why on earth would someone do that? When we could resume uh, the dream of Apollo. The, uh, the goal of SpaceX is to try to advance rocket technology, and in particular to try to crack a problem that I think is vital for humanity to become a space-faring civilization, which is to have a, a, a rapidly and fully reusable rocket. What are the things that need to happen in order for the future to be an exciting and inspiring one? And I, I, really, I really think there's a fundamental difference if, if you sort of look into the future between a humanity that is, that is a space-faring civilization that's out there exploring the stars on multiple planets. And I think that's really exciting. And, compared with, with one where we are forever confined to Earth until at some eventual extinction event. Sometimes the truth is hard to find. You gotta chase after it a little bit. But truth is truth and it's there. And we've been taught to believe lies. And so I'm trying to point them out. Be careful what you believe in the time we live in. I would like to challenge your beliefs and challenge you to consider other possibilities that nobody considered until a few years ago. Quench not the spirit. 
despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. Prove all things. Prove all things. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. That it be not moved. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Prove all things. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image, into an image, into an image, into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together.
Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. The, the weird part about it is space is so incredibly black, so incredibly dark. It, it's a bottomless pit of, of deep black. Almost so deep it almost has a texture when you look at it. It's watery stars that will always reserve the blackness of darkness forever. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is. And the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. I saw a deep abyss with columns of heavenly fire, and among them I saw columns of fire fall, which were beyond measure alike towards the height and towards the depth. And beyond that abyss I saw a place which had no firmament of the heaven above, and no firmly founded earth beneath it. There was no water upon it, and no birds but it was a waste and horrible place. 
I saw their seven stars, like great burning mountains. And to me, when I inquired regarding them, the angel said, This place is the end of heaven and earth. This has become a prison for the stars of the host of heaven. And the stars which roll over the fire are they which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in the beginning of their rising, because they did not come forth at their appointed times. And he was wroth with them, and bound them to the time when their guilt should be consummated, even for ten thousand years. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. When we could resume uh, the dream of Apollo, the, the, the goal of SpaceX really was to make as much progress as possible to advance rocket technology to the point where hopefully we can establish a colony on Mars. Dream of Apollo. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. 
Apollo. 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 And we could resume uh, the dream of Apollo. The angel of the bottomless pit. Apollo. Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour, the friction of air slows Orion considerably, while also subjecting it to temperatures of 5,000 degrees. With the Orion now at just 300 miles per I think you asked how did I get up to the ISS and how long do I spend, and I came up here just like all the crew members since the space shuttle retired in 2011. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. Since the space shuttle retired in 2011. And it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. We all fly on the Russian Soyuz rocket and Soyuz spacecraft. And behold another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side. We all fly on the Russian Soyuz rocket and Soyuz spacecraft. Like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Since the end of the shuttle program, the only ride of the station has been on the Russian Soyuz. But by working with SpaceX and Boeing, there's soon going to be a new fleet of spacecraft capable of bringing humans to low Earth orbit. And of course, all of this supports the mission of the International Space Station, humanity's premier laboratory in space, where we're pushing the boundaries in science and technology every single day. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of man, and a mouth, speaking great things. The bug for space really bit me when I came down to visit my grandpa down here in Houston. So I saw the big old Saturn V rocket sitting on its belly out there and, and just thought, man, if, if humanity can do something this amazing, this awesome, I want to be a part of it. And I just fell more in love with the idea of space and, and being a part of something bigger than myself. The thought of actually getting to space, I couldn't wrap my head around that. You walk up to this, this rocket that's covered in frost from the cold fuel inside and, and it's creaking and groaning and kind of alive and, and you're like, well, that's pretty cool, but uh, they're probably gonna cancel. It's, probably, it's just not gonna happen. You know, I've done so many sims and it, it just can't be real. There's no way I'm gonna go to space. But then when, when no kidding it, 
it it lights off and you feel the rumble and then you start to move and and that kind of just constant smooth acceleration uh pulling you back in the seat everything comes to life on the panels you see all the things that you've seen a hundred times in sims in one instant all of that that i felt was unimaginable became real and it was just it was a magical thing i'll just never forget You know, we're scientists and engineers and pilots and doctors, we're not poets, but we sure try to be because you want to share as best you can the experience um, that that you've seen and felt. I think I told my wife uh, uh, on our, once I got on board that I thought it was a- It's a burrito of awesomeness smothered in awesome sauce, baby. It's so beautiful. It was just the beauty of being there yourself with your own eyes and seeing it. One thing that, that I would love to do while on orbit was there was a, a window in one of the Russian modules that looked kind of out the back of the station. And I'd go sit there. I'd turn off everything and you could get it really dark in there. Uh, let my eyes adjust and just look out at the stars. And the stars, you know, the longer you sit, the more you see. And it just, it becomes unbelievable. The number, the just billions of stars, the Magellanic clouds, the galaxies that you can see with your naked eye. And they don't twinkle. They just stare at you. They dare you to come and to, to explore. It lights a fire inside your soul that is, is unlike anything I ever experienced before or since. And it's why you see astronauts you know, they say 560, 580, I don't know how many people have gone to space. They're all the same. They all have that bug. And they all want to do everything in their power after experiencing that to make sure that humanity reaches its potential, that we get there, that we don't just see the stars, that we explore them, that we live there, that we grow into what we can be. And you're reminded of the incredible potential that we have as humans when we put everything else aside and just work together. And you feel a part of that, uh, looking out the cupola and just being a part of thousands of people from across this globe that have put together this just palace in the sky for us to discover and learn and grow. It showed me the potential of what humanity can be when you work together as one team. It inspired me uh, to do everything I can in my power for the rest of my life to enable humanity to evolve, to get there, to those stars that were staring straight in my face and daring us to come, come get them. Uh, that is something that you can never quench. It's been a couple years since I flew. Uh, and that fire still burns just as strong today as it, as it will when I die. Subscribe for more space. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. So deep it almost has a texture when you look at it. The, the weird part about it is space is so incredibly black, so incredibly dark. It's a bottomless pit of, of, of deep black, almost... Even darkness which may be felt. So deep it almost has a texture when you look at it. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever wandering stars raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. And these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. When you come in from a spacewalk, you're surrounded by the emptiness of space. It's sort of like the opposite of air. There's nothing there at all. When you quickly repressurize the hatch and you open up the hatch and you smell, what is that lingering smell from a place that used to be exposed to space? The smell in there is, is a little bit like that trace of a smell of gunpowder or burnt steak or sort of like brimstone, like a witch has just been there. It's a cool lingering trace of a smell. I think what it really is, brimstone, like sort of that metallic gunpowder fired smell that like a witch has just been there. It, in truth, it smells a little bit like a witch has just been there. It smells a little bit like a burnt steak. Brimstone. Like, smells a little bit like a burnt steak. Brimstone. Like a witch has just been there. It's 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 brimstone. Like That's true. 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 Go forth and descent through all the heavens, and thou wilt descent to the firmament in that world, to the angel in Sheol thou wilt descent heavens, and thou wilt descent to the firmament in that world, to the angel in Sheol thou wilt descend heavens, and thou wilt descent to the firmament in that world, to the angel in Sheol thou wilt descend. And we ascended to the firmament, I and he, and there I saw Samael and his hosts, and there was great fighting therein, and the angels of Satan were envying one another. And we ascended to the firmament, I and he, and there I saw Samael and his hosts, and there was great fighting therein, and the angels of Satan were envying one another. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be resolved, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. He hath reserved in everlasting chains and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. But cast them down to hell, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, wandering, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness, blackness of darkness forever, and even the blackness of darkness forever. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And the entire law of the stars will be closed to the sinners, and the thoughts of those who dwell upon the earth will go astray over them, and they will turn from all their ways and will go astray, and will think them gods. Wandering stars. And I saw a burning fire in what was in all the mountains, and I saw a place there beyond the great earth. There the waters gathered together, and I saw a deep chasm of the earth with pillars of heavenly fire, and I saw among them fiery pillars of heaven, which were falling, and as regards both height and depth they were immeasurable. But cast them down to hell. And beyond this chasm I saw a place, and it had neither the sky above it nor the foundation of earth below it. There was no water on it and no birds, but it was a desert place. And a terrible thing I saw there, seven stars like great burning mountains, wandering stars, and like a spirit questioning me, the angel said, This is the place of the end of heaven and earth. This is the prison for the stars of heaven and the host of heaven. And the stars which roll over the fire, 
These are the ones which transgress the command of the Lord. Wandering stars. From the beginning of their rising, because they did not come out at their proper times. And he was angry with them and bound them until the time of the consummation of their sin in the year of mystery. And Uriel said to me, the spirits of the angels who were promiscuous with women will stand here. Blackness of darkness. And they, assuming many forms, wandering stars, made men unclean and will lead men astray so that they sacrifice to demons as gods. Wandering stars. And they will stand there until the great judgment on which they will be judged so that an end will be made of them. Whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? The blackness of darkness forever. Well, I believe he's clearly talking about him. Because in the Bible, there's a place where there's darkness forever. And it's called hell in the lake of fire. and realize that we're on this very special place and you know this, this precious island in this abyss of darkness 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 I was thinking about time and it's 2020, 2020. What makes it be 2020? That means there's been 2020 years since we started counting. How do we know what a year is? Well, that's 365 days, right? Well, how do we know to count that many days? How do we know how a year is a year? We could maybe say, well, because we have all the seasons. Yeah, and why do we have all the seasons? What determines what amount of time goes by in a day what determines what amount of time goes by in a year well here's what I think there's only one way that we can determine when a year goes by basically one way and that is by looking up at the sky clock that exists every year the stars like for instance today if we took a still shot of the sky from my house 
in one year's time, the stars would all be in the exact same position that they're in today. But every day in between, those stars would all be in different positions than they are specifically today, and a year from today, and a year from that day, and a year from that day. Because the stars have a cycle that they go through. They're turning, but at the same time that they're turning, they're changing their orientation slightly each day. We end up with the stars back in the same position again. This is one reason why the idea that the heliocentric model gives us of the North Star being previously a different star and not Polaris is a ridiculous falsehood because that's not how the sky works. But just think about that. How do we determine a year? We do it with the stars in the sky. And that is actually stated in the creation story in Genesis. God said he created the sun, moon, and stars for signs, seasons, and days, and years. And that's what we witness here on the earth. So that is the truth. So what we've been watching here on the screen is time-lapse photography of the stars. Now what happens when the star trails or the this time-lapse photography, what happens when it starts looking like this? And if that continues, how are we going to determine what a year is? I mean, I think we could still tell. But doesn't it seem like something's kind of getting in the way there? This started to happen to time-lapse photography in May of 2019. So just over a year ago, year and a half ago or so. And every month or so, they've been launching another 60 of these satellites. These are Starlink satellites that SpaceX is putting up in there in that darkness. People call it space. But they're putting it up there and I'm just making a clear note to everyone that God ordained laws for all the luminaries. Every star in the sky has an ordained course that God commanded them to go on. And we already know that seven of those stars, which we call planets, disobeyed God's ordained courses for them. And so he bound them in darkness until judgment. But besides those seven, all the other stars circle Polaris every 24 hours. And that's just what the sky has always been. And so there's been a change made in the last year and a half. A big change. So this video is just a watchman's call out to those who are paying attention. Daniel 7 verse 25 says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. I think we're there, guys. There is a man in the world today trying to change times and laws because that is what the sun, moon, and stars are, is they are for signs, seasons, days, and years.
I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Lift off of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, launching Dragon to the International Space Station. And he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And stage one entry burn is underway. It's a burn of about 10 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Falcon 9 first stage headed back toward Cape Canaveral Air Force Station where it launched six minutes 37 seconds ago. Stage two performance nominal. And he doeth great wonders and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Back at landing zone one at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. LD1, the F9 has landed. Uh, land operators proceed. Well, thou hast said in thine heart, question. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. When 
he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, rise up. The earth is spinning and it gives us the seasons. Fear before him, all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved, that it be not moved. The earth is spinning and it gives us the seasons. Who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever, that it should not be removed forever. Getting deep into the actual, uh, in the actual uh, movement of the earth. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Movement of the earth uh, as, it, uh, as it related to the stars and to the sun. There's an odd thing that takes place on this earth. You know that one spin of the earth is a 24 hours, okay? That's one day. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. If it spun on a perfect vertical axis, then nothing would change as far as the relationship of the stars to the earth, but it doesn't. It wobbles. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. And it takes it 25,000 and something years to make one wobble. It takes it one day to make one turn. The earth is spinning and it gives us the seasons. Now this wobble is what we call the precession of the equinoxes. No man's lived long enough to observe this. No man's lived long enough to observe this. The stars change position in the heavens ever so slowly. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. And what we have here is that the earth is turning back against the stars, but it's spinning in the other direction for the day. So it's spinning in two different directions. All right, and it's not spinning in two different directions. It's spinning in one direction, but as it spins, it wobbles. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. The North Star has changed over time, and it has changed down through time because of the wobbling of the earth. That it should not be removed forever. When you take a position where you absolutely and dogmatically state, well, if you don't believe this, you're not a believer. Yes, I am a believer.
If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? The earth is spinning. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. And it offends me to my soul for somebody to tell me because I don't believe in a flat earth that I'm, a, I'm not a believer. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. You're welcome. You're welcome to come. I'll say that one more time. You are welcome to come to Temple Baptist Church if you believe in a flat earth. Just don't try to evangelize people. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. But I'll tell you right now, folks, if you believe in a flat earth, these people out here are laughing their head off at you. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. They are laughing their head off at you. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. It shouldn't have to happen. A Johnny come lately trumped up something that came out of the cracks and all of a sudden it's the rage. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And everybody's jumping on board of the flat earth thing. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. The one thing that absolutely convinces me is this Christian astronaut who spent over a year up there and all the photographs and all the videos that he made. Is this man a liar? That's, he's not the only one. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. With a sphere, a globe, whatever you want to believe, that's up to you. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth.
And I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. Then said he unto me, This is a curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For every one that stealeth shall be cut off, as on this side according to it. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off, as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. The, the weird part about it is, space is so incredibly black, so incredibly dark. It, it's a bottomless pit of, of, of deep black. Almost so deep it almost has a texture when you look at it. Because in the Bible there's a place where there's darkness. Here's called hell. Hell is fire. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. When we could resume uh, the dream of Apollo. The, the, the goal of SpaceX really was to make as much progress as possible to advance rocket technology to the point where hopefully we can establish a colony on Mars. Dream of Apollo. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Apollo. Apollyon. Apollo. Apollyon. And we could resume uh, the dream of Apollo. The angel of the bottomless pit. Apollo. NASA is now embarking on a bold new program called Artemis. Artemis is the twin sister of Apollo, which, which is, is the, the angel of the bottomless pit and the goddess of the moon in Greek mythology. Fifty years ago, we went to the moon. We called it Apollo. What many people don't know is that Apollo had a twin. She was a woman named Artemis, goddess of the moon. It is the stated policy of this administration and the United States of America to return American astronauts to the moon within the next five years. Our agency, NASA, is going to do everything in its power to meet that vision. We're proud of what we do here, so come join NASA as we go forward to the moon and on to Mars. A lot of us say that the Earth is flat, and it sounds crazy, and it sounds like that couldn't be true. Because we live on a globe. But, let me try to explain a little bit from my point of view why I would say that the Earth is flat. Why would someone at age, what, five years ago I was 38, why did I start saying, hey, I think the earth is flat? And why did I buy some nice optics and telescopes and start researching and studying the sky and, and studying how far we can see on the surface of this earth? Why would I do that? A lot of people would say, Joe says the earth is flat because he wants he wants to be special. He has a need to be different or, you know, wants to be looked at differently or something. And I totally get that. But what I would actually say myself is that it's not because I want anything. It's because I was called by Jesus to be a witness of his marvelous light and to give my testimony about what I bear witness to. That's why I say the earth is flat. And there's another reason too. Because of what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 10 through 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie 
that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The people who don't receive the love of the truth will be damned. So it has nothing to do with Joe wanting to feel special or any of these other people that are saying these same things. We don't want to feel special. We love you and care about you and have learned supernaturally and seen supernaturally the truth in this world. And this world is full of lies. And the lies don't seem like lies because we were all born believing them. We were, our parents believed them. Their parents believed them. And now it, people have seen the truth. And it surrounds you in this world. It surrounds you. Um, water at its surface when at rest is flat, level, horizontal. It doesn't take a curved shape. That's only in your imagination. I have proved this in reality to myself, and I have my YouTube channel that I share publicly, my observations, and maybe you haven't gone out to do these observations and see, to prove to yourself that if we were on a spinning ball, two things. It must curve, which it doesn't, and it's spinning, which it isn't. So we were born believing the opposite of our perceptions and the, the senses that, that we have, and we were born believing the opposite, and now it's ridiculed to actually observe the world that we live in and on and to prove things about it. It's 2020, guys. We have the best equipment. We have the best communications. We have worldwide instant communication. We have the best optics that have ever been. It's 2020. We can know if the earth is a ball spinning in outer space or if it's a flat plane that God made. God's in heaven. Remember that. And also remember, this is my testimony. Jesus showed this to me. He opened my eyes, and, and I could see something when I turned, not when I turned, but around 37 or 38 years old. It changed. My eyes were open. My perceptions were, were used more clearly. I could see clearer. I comprehend things that I didn't even know existed. He showed me the truth, and I want you to see it because it's crucial for your eternal life. And that is my testimony. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. NASA lied. We don't live on a spinning ball. Earth is flat.
Behold, an he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth, and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with collar against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground, and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south, and toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground, and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, Take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So I'm realizing, as this year goes on, that there's like a line that I have to draw eventually. I went out of town, worked with my dad and his boss, at a mall and had to wear a mask uh, here and there and I flew home had to wear a mask on the plane now I'm I could fight it and all this but there's a line that I have to draw for myself soon and I know what the result's going to be. Here, let's do a scenario. So, right now, I go to the gas station to put fuel in my truck. And I can go in and pay without wearing a mask, and nobody says anything. But 
that's not going to last. That's just not going to last. Not the way that this is going. So, at some point in time, since I actually don't even have a credit card, so I can't really pay at the pump. So what if they tell me you can't buy fuel unless you wear a mask? Well, if I really needed fuel, I'd probably have to put a mask on, wouldn't I? But you know that this thing that bothers me about wearing a mask the most, the, what bothers me the most about it, is all the times that I read in the scripture about people covering their faces with shame. There's a lot of verses that say that in the Bible. The book of Enoch talks about it. Here's Enoch chapter 62, starting in verse 5. And one portion of them shall look on the other, and they shall be terrified, and they shall be downcast of countenance, and pain shall seize them when they see that Son of Man sitting on the throne of his glory. And the kings and the mighty and all who possess the earth shall bless and glorify and extol him who rules over all, who was hidden. For from the beginning the Son of Man was hidden, and the Most High preserved him in the presence of his might, and revealed him to the elect. And the congregation of the elect and holy shall be sown, and all the elect shall stand before him on that day. And all the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who rule the earth shall fall down before him on their faces and worship and set their hope on that Son of Man and petition him and supplicate for mercy at his hands. Nevertheless, that Lord of Spirits will so press them that they shall hastily go forth from his presence and their faces shall be filled with shame and the darkness grow deeper on their faces. And he will deliver them to the angels for punishment to execute vengeance on them because they have oppressed his children and his elect. And they shall be a spectacle for the righteous and for his elect. They shall rejoice over them because the wrath of the Lord of Spirits resteth upon them and his sword is drunk with their blood. And the righteous and elect shall be saved on that day and they shall never thenceforward see the face of the sinners and the unrighteous. So, verses like that, that I can't do the mask. So, there's a point in time here where it's gonna, something's going to change in my life where it might be hard to come, come across things that I need, possibly. But I really don't think that that matters at all. In the time that we're in. I know most people don't realize what time we're in. But I do. Psalm 83 verse 16 says, Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Psalm 34 verse 5 says, They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Verse 6, This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles and it's just a lot of these things seem to be in the Bible I don't know how specific but there's a day coming guys a day of darkness coming where the Sun isn't gonna give its light and the moon won't give its light Joel 2 Verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. 
The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on top of mountains, they sh shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Blow, ye, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and, and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land, and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied wherewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove you far off from the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face towards the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and will cause, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. All the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And he sh and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said. 
and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So yeah, I don't know. I'm I've just been thinking about this a lot. It's gonna be it's gonna be getting worse, you know. Um I'm not even talking about a vaccine, you know, but that's probably coming too. <laughs> so take your mask off, set an example for the people around you. When they look at you strange, just remember that you were called to do something else. You're called to see the truth. All right. Trevor and I are here at a church in South Carolina. One of the assistant pastors asked Trevor not to talk about Flat Earth at uh, some events that were coming up. So Trevor and I are gonna share some Flat Earth information with the entire congregation here, secret agent style. <music> Ask questions. Hey, how are you? Morning, brothers. Cool. That's what we're doing too. Church. Okay. What are you looking in cars for? Oh, uh, not looking in them. Actually, um, just want to give you one of these. The Bible teaches that the Earth is immovable, fixed. Brother, we're it's Christ on pillars. We're Christians, and we appreciate that. Me too. Uh, yeah, I know God created the universe and he's still creating the universe, uh, but I don't... What do you mean by he's still creating? 
the universe. Because it God. says it was completed on day six. He created the earth. The universe, who knows what it's doing out there. Maybe you need to go, uh, as I said, find Test this, all things. Uh, read these lips. Don't. Just take a flyer. You okay. got shit. Cool. God stopped the sun in Joshua to yeah. stop the day, correct? We don't need you filming things, buddy. I need it. I need it as evidence for how the pastors react to biblical cosmology because I find it truly disheartening that this is how Christians respond to someone that simply wants to ask questions about scripture. Do you believe God made a spinning ball earth in infinite space? Yes or no? Yes. God's word says nothing about a spinning ball. Give me one verse. Just in the beginning, Give God me. created the heavens and the earth. This is the earth. Fair yes. Tom, he created everything on Nothing it. about that proves it's a ball. Look, I, don't, what you I know that verse by heart. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Earth was without, yeah. but brother, I the don't earth know was without form and void. Where's your Bible? And the, the darkness moved over. I got it memorized. No, you darkness didn't. moved over the deep, and the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God separated the light from the day. And the light he called day, and the darkness he called night. Come on, guys. Yeah. You're joking. You're Go. joking right now. No, you are. Go. <laughs> Enough of your stuff that you're spewing out. Anything, Trevor, to add? The firmament. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. It's firm, solid, something solid above our heads. If I ever need you, I'll call you. You don't have my now, number. I What's my phone it. number? I got it memorized. We're, we're all forgiven. We're standing up for the firmament because oh, the listen, heavens declare the glory of God. God. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. It's firm, solid, something solid above our heads. I I you don't the have the right touch. You're please. the police. I, I let me see your badge. Are you lying again? Who cares about creation? The get things. off this property. Get off the property. So no, go. My name's Nathan Thompson. Nathan I run the Thompson. largest. I run the largest flat earth group in the world. And so Jesus said, if you don't understand the earthly things, how will you understand the heavenly things? Okay. You're, you don't want your question. Well, that's fine. So y'all you know. Well, Just fine. Move on. Cool. Make that claim. The conversation is over. Why would you make that claim? Uh, because, because With I, what evidence? Just. The Bible says be able to look. circle. The earth is a circle, which yeah. is a flat shape. Yeah. Okay. Earth's flat. Now you're happy. Go. Sweet. Oh, praise God. I'm moving, no, so we're not just, spinning. And God didn't create it, so y'all move on. No, God did create it. You just said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Get out of here, man. Come on. I have you, enough you can roll. Have you ever met a biblical earther, someone who believes real cosmology? Has this ever occurred to you that this is a real thing? I believe the earth is random. God put it in an orbit. Whoa, 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 whoa. God says God. it's immovable. So how could he put it in an orbit and say it's immovable? You smile. You smile because you know the scriptures. The devil is the father of lies. So, and the, and the Bible says, test all things and hold fast to that which is true. Yeah. So you came out and said, I believe this, and I'm saying, yo, your Bible that we believe in is telling us to test all things. And this gentleman over there is telling us, oh, it's a ball. It's in space. Well, he not... hasn't tested any of that. Well, he didn't have one scripture to support we that are, either. We all, we all believe different things, and, and, uh, and you have your right to your opinion. And I'm not going to tell you that it's wrong. I'm not going to say that. I'm right or I'm wrong or whatever. <laughs> well, the thing is, the Bible says raise kids up in the way you want them to be and then and they'll follow that path. But if you get raised for 60, 70 years believing a lie, then your ego, you become emotionally attached to the lie. And, and that doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it true. But it's just an emotional response. I get that all the time, my man. I've done this 10,000 times, and it's always the same thing. Where are you based? I mean... I you, keep it moving. You keep, move. I was in Dallas yesterday. Dallas. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. I did a debate wow. over there. You've been the, a long way. <laughs> the video already has 10,000 views. I did a debate, and it was the exact same thing there. Just guys yelling at me, pointing in my face, calling me names. So there's nothing new under the sun. The truth will be attacked. At first, it'll be violently opposed and ridiculed. Right? And then yeah. it'll be mocked, yeah. and then it'll become self evident. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. <laughs> Trevor, I love how you went into the firmament. The firmament. 
immediately. That was beautiful, dude. Thanks, bro. And there's no way, they're not even trying to take the flyers. So all these cars got flat smacked. Those guys got the truth. They didn't have any good arguments scripturally or scientifically. They live on a globe. And I'd say all in all, that was excellent. We did a pretty I good job. I hope God was glorified, you know? I really do. Good for good, I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Until the next video, peace out. You have to move back. You have to remember your spacing. Move back. You're very that's too close. If you can touch the person in front of you, that means you're way too close. to ride in a dragon on top of the beast named Falcon 9. 
Yeah, yeah wow. I, I, I tell you, I, I, don't I don't know if there's words really to properly describe what, what, what that, that felt like. like. Um, you know, you, know, you talk, talk about sitting on a dragon on top of the beast, and it definitely was. You you knew you were going somewhere, um, and this one was a little bit longer, so we actually had to uh, live in dragon for, for quite a while. Ride in a dragon on top of the beast named Falcon 9. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Sitting on a dragon on top of the beast. And yeah, wow. Each one entry start up. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he doeth great one wonders, Sonic. so that he maketh fire come down stage from one heaven one on the earth in the sight of men. Fire come down from heaven on the earth. Stage one landing leg deploy. Fire come down from heaven on the earth. Fire come down from heaven on the earth. Falcon 9 has landed. Sitting on a dragon on top of the beast, 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 beast. It's a bottomless pit in this abyss of darkness. I really believe in the space frontier of the abyss, uh, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> the good abyss. The good abyss. Uh, You know, I have, I have to just, just uh, second, second what everybody has uh, said before me. Um, you know, Christmas, the holidays, it's a time when we're celebrating the birth of our Savior, um, but it's also a time for families. And uh, I do have to say, one of the things I always love about Christmas is my mom's date balls. I really miss my mom's date balls. Anyway, um, from Expedition 64, happy holidays to everyone, and thank you for a great year. We're celebrating the birth of our Savior. We're celebrating the birth of our Savior. We're celebrating the birth of our Savior. Um, you know, you talk about sitting on a dragon on top of the beast, and it definitely was. You you knew you were going somewhere. I will ascend into heaven. Uh, you know, it actually all started earlier than that when we were doing the fueling operations, and it's talking to you the whole time. Uh, but then once we lifted off the pad, man, it was it was exciting. It was an incredible, incredible ride. I will ascend into heaven. Uh, the throttle down, the, when it when it throttled back up, boy, you felt it. You knew you were going somewhere. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Uh, the staging was incredible. We were all just smiling and beaming and high fiving, and it was it was an amazing experience. Yep. So we actually had to uh, live in Dragon for for quite a while. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord.
engines now shut down on Electron's first stage, a reaction control system will reorient the stage 180 degrees to place it on an ideal angle for re-entry. An ideal angle for re-entry. An ideal angle for re-entry. Designed to enable it to survive the incredible heat and pressure, incredible heat and pressure, incredible heat and pressure known as the wall, the wall, the wall during its descent back to Earth. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. The firmament. The wall. The firmament. An ideal angle for re-entry. The firmament. The wall. The firmament. The wall. The firmament. Incredible heat and pressure re-entry. The wall. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet, and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. SpaceX is also testing a rocket that can be reused, softly landing on a column of flame, on a column of flame, on a column of flame. Another step on a longer journey. Just a very tough uh, engineering problem. In, in the last 12 months or so, I, I've come to the conclusion that, that it can be solved. Um, and, and I think SpaceX is going to try to do it. Falcon 9 is essentially standing on the shoulders of titans as they like to say on the shoulders of titans as they like to say on the shoulders of titans as they like to say behold an he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes and he came to the ram that had two horns which i'd seen standing before the river and ran unto him in the fury of his power and I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with collar against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground, and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south, and toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground, and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered.
Why does it start over? Dragon is in countdown. FTS is armed. Go for launch. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you.